terms of who is our audience, how do we communicate with them, and ultimately, if you don't have an audience and if you're not communicating with them effectively, you can't sell tickets to your event. Some of the events that I'll actually um, highlight as case studies are free tech, are free events, um, and what we're seeing a lot of brands, alcohol brands, uh, vehicle brands, one of whom we've worked with, create their own events that exist as their own properties, and they don't necessarily sell tickets. But even though tickets are free, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to have a full house, seats on bums, bums on seats rather, or you know a full audience in front of your in front of your stage. You still need to make that event relevant. You need to tell the right story, and you need to understand who your audience is. So if we look at who is your audience, ultimately, um, I've got additional notes on my laptop, which is why I have both. Sorry. Um, how do you create an audience if you haven't got one before? Uh, what we find with a lot of new uh, event promoters or events is they're kind of starting from a zero base, which is incredibly difficult. Although with the advent of social media and um, a lot of the kind of digital tools that a lot of the other speakers have spoken about, it becomes a lot easier. But it is also very easy to speak to the wrong people thinking you are in fact speaking to the right people. How do you understand what their needs are? That's very important. So creating a music festival or a comedy show or some sort of event, there needs to be some reason for them to believe. There has to be some value that that event can add back to them. Without that, they're not going to believe, they're not going to sell their tickets. I think we also need to really remember, in terms of who our audience is, to really se segment them down to understand, are they 25 or are they 45? Are they predominantly male or female? Or is it a mixed bag? That will really determine the kind of tools and platforms that you use and the kinds of engagement opportunities that you can create. So, uh, for example, if you're speaking to a 22-year-old, you're more likely to use social media very aggressively, whereas print media will be dead to them. It's very unlikely they'll pick up a magazine or a newspaper. So saying to your client, well, look, we've got all this exposure for you in print doesn't necessarily add value and it doesn't necessarily sell tickets. You need to also, and this is something I find quite interesting, is make sure you have a call to action in place. So often I see advertising, in, whether it's a poster, whether it's a social media ad, whether it's something on Instagram, telling you what the event is, selling it to you really well, but they forget to tell you where to buy tickets. And that is such a fundamental and such a simple tool that people forget to do, to actually put a link that takes you to the ticketing place and to make sure that that ticketing portal or landing page is easily accessible and mobile friendly because we also have to remember if you know who your audience is you'll know where they're accessing their media and the predominantly in South Africa especially if you look at our demographic the majority easily 80 percent of the audience is mobile optimized and they're using their phones to be on social media to transact but also, some people are still weary of accessing ticketing information and buying tickets online. So there is still this need to have a physical ticket booth. There are still people who go to an actual compute ticket booth and buy physical t printed out tickets. Um, so you need to make sure that you know who your audience is ultimately. I suppose that then leads to the question is, who is my audience in the room today? Um, I know the question was asked just now is, there could be some promoters here, there could be artists who you might be wanting to essentially promote your own music at an event, maybe you collaborate with some of your fellow artists or DJs. How do you, how do you speak to that audience? Yes, you'll have your friends, you'll know who they are, but how do you get your friends to get their friends to get their friends, to get other people who are interested in music that is your specific genre? And that's where it starts to become really interesting. Uh, there are also agencies, advertising agencies, people like, like One Eye Jack, whose job it is is to work with our brands and our clients to find the right audiences and to tell those stories and to ultimately help sell tickets. And then there's the organizers and the promoters who like Rocking the Daisies, like the Savannah Comics Choice Awards, like Rage Festival. These are all people who put their hearts, their blood, sweat and tears and a lot of their own money into these events to make them a success. But if they aren't attracting the right audience, they won't have repeat audience. And I think that's another important point to make.